Hello folks, do you ever ask yourself how do I make a character for Handiwork Games new 5e setting, Beowulf Age of Heroes? Well I've been asking myself and I've come up with a plan. I've invited my good buddy Arlen Walker of Live from Pelham's Wasteland YouTube video and podcast to come and join me in my recording wardrobe to discuss the character generation for this game. So stay tuned and all will be revealed. These are all potential PC tokens. Um, okay. So you should pick yeah. one of them that you like for your PC and then we'll roll some dice for your stats, pick some other stuff and figure out uh, what you're going to play this little urchin type character yeah i keep because i keep talking about kids on bikes and, and games like that i don't think i've ever really played a little urchin type it might be an interest because it be interesting to see how that character can be a hero you know it's not your typical beowulf hero the character sheet is a different one from uh the sort of standard um, D and D five E roll twenty sheet. It's the scrolls sheet because I found that easier to uh, tinker with. You'll see that there's a legends skill instead of history and arcana. Um, Indeed, yes. And then there's there's a couple other places where there's things like that. Um, the the alignment only has three alignments. There's unaligned of the book and of the old ways. I really like that. I, yeah. yeah, I thought that was good because I don't not a massive fan of alignment. Yeah, in, in the game, I've, I've dumped it out of my five E game, so this is a nice alternative. I think it's nice because it's really like flavorful to the world. I think it's a really interesting development the way that people are taking the, the core five E and then doing something quite specific like this. So. You so you need some stats. So what I did with Jason was um, four d six. Drop the lowest one down the line, and then you can roll a seventh time and replace any of your previous stats with the seventh roll. Okay. And I figure that's a good way to give you a a pretty capable PC, but slightly random, so that you don't have kind of complete control over what you get. I'm gonna do proper old school die rolling. Oh, and, nice. And look, and we, we will use dice cam. Right? Nice. So first one. You could. Do you want to enter them in the sheet whilst I roll? Yeah, I'll enter them in the sheet. That'll be good. Yeah. Yeah, all right, strength. Right, strength. Oh, dear, oh, dear. A seven. A seven? Well, your floor is going to be eight, so we'll leave it as an eight. Uh, so that's a 15. 15 for dexterity. Nice. 11. 11 for constitution. 15. 15 for intelligence. Uh, 10. Oh, no, not 12. 12 for wisdom. Uh, and 12 again. 12 for charisma, and then one more time. Oh, there we go. 14. 14. All right. So you could replace your strength, your con, your wisdom, or your charisma with a 14. Those stats map quite nicely already with uh -huh. the image of that character. Yeah. I wonder if they'd be more charismatic. Yeah. 14 charisma would be good. And you get uh you get to add some stats on top of this too. So Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna sw I'm gonna make that the charisma, I think. Because right. if you're if you're little, it ha helps to be cute. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Um and you start with inspiration and alright, so speed, medium size, um, Ability scores. Improve one of your ability scores by two, and then another, and improve it by one. I'm going to go for 17 dexterity. 17 dexterity. Nice. Yeah. And I, I, think, I think this kid's smart. Uh-huh. So we've gone one in intelligence. 16 intelligence. Nice. And so um, 
instead of, so one of the cool things about the hero class is that unlike the normal um, 5e classes, you get a lot more chances to get feats or ability scores up because it's it's like one every three levels instead of one every four, I think, which over 20 levels adds up, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Bringing a bit more of that mythical heroism into yeah this. well and it, it lets you play with the feats a lot more because the feats are really cool in this game they did a really good job i think with making the feats feel really flavorful and have a lot of options so like there's a, a berserker rage feat right there's no mm -hmm. um there's there's no barbarian class but you can basically almost as if you were a barbarian start specking into that direction for your mm -hmm. character which is really cool because it's like, oh, you don't need all these yep. different classes with all these different kind of preset abilities. You can kind of pick your own and, and build your character the way you want. So ability scores, feats. You were going to do a feat at the end because you're going to get a free one to start with. Um, okay. We're not going to worry about languages, but you are going to get a quirk. So let us, how about you roll a 1d12 Okay. A nine. A nine. Enduring. Ooh, this one is really cool. When you take damage, you can choose to make a constitution saving throw with the damage total as the difficulty class. On a success, you take only half the damage. You can only use this feature once per long rest. I quite like doing these random things because they sometimes suggest... The, well, it's not sometimes. They they suggest this unfolding character. Yeah. Well, and you don't you don't you kind of not only do you not know what you're gonna get, but you also don't really know kind of what um, how the stuff is gonna interact, right? Which is yeah. one of the interesting things. Like your con isn't great, but if you had rolled like an eighteen con and gotten enduring, then mm. that would be you know. That would be really suggestive of like this idea that you're, you know, a, a super tough uh, little kid. Random one. Oh, and we didn't do your alignment. What do you think your character's alignment is? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna randomize that. So, uh, so we will say one or two, the old ways. Three or four is the um, kind of neutral, weren't it? Neutral. Yeah. And five or six will be off the book. All right. So off the book. Of the book. Nice. See, I wouldn't have picked that. I would not have picked that. So we will make that work. All right. And then background. Do you want to do it randomly or do you want to pick? I mean, let's do it randomly. All whilst right. we're on a whilst we're on the roll. Yeah. <laughs> okay. D eight is a five. So the foundling. Okay. Ah, oh, the foundling. That's perfect for this kid. You might have been orphaned by disease or war or found as a mysterious stranger as a child. In any case, you do not have a secure place in your homeland, for whoever took you in cannot claim you by blood. Thus, you have ranged out looking for new opportunities and perhaps some knowledge of your bitter past. Mm. So you get proficiency in animal handling and survival you get the feature ready mind you are used to dangerous and unpredictable situations once per short rest you can grant yourself advantage on your initiative role as long as you are not surprised all right so um we can do personality trait and ideal and bond and flaw now so you want to roll 1d8 and 3d6 go to two Two, personality trait. I like to talk to folks that I meet, even though I'm often nervous. All right, and then 1d6 for your ideal. Two, fairness. I judge others by their words and actions, not appearance or lineage, because I want the same respect for myself. All right, uh, 1d6 for your bond. A three. Without my friends, I would be lost and useless. All right, and then 1d6 for your flaw. A four. A four. I cannot bring myself to fully trust anyone. I'm always afraid they will dispose of me. 
my uh, solo character, Redwald, his flaw is um, I cannot show fear even when retreat would be the wisest course of action. So mm -hmm. one of the things with the, the monsters is that monsters in Beowulf have the undefeatable condition, which means that basically you only do one damage with a successful hit to them, and they also cannot be defeated until you remove the undefeatable condition. Redwald basically stabbed the monster with a spear and saw it did like basically nothing to it and was like, well... I'm not going to back down. I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm a warrior. And then basically got his ass kicked in Beowulf, the original poem. We might imagine that Grindel has the undefeatable condition unless he's like within the hall um, or he's close to Hrothgar's throne. Um, that might be the way that you'd model it because you could say, okay, Beowulf grabs Grindel and then wrestles with him next to the throne and suddenly he's not because Grindel has a in earlier parts he has a fear of the throne that he won't come close to it um, and so that's how I'd probably model that event and then Beowulf is able to wrestle him and tear off his arm and all that sort of stuff because he's now defeatable yeah so it's, it's like an interesting version of the immunity that you you pretty much I was had in D&D. &D. Yeah. You know, like, uh, you know, like the silver weapons or magic items required to, to hit the creature. Well, and I that think was so sort of rigidly defined. Yeah. Whereas this, this, this creates this a bit more dynamic. Well, and I like that it's not, it's, it's kind of designed to be removed. I really like that. That's one of the things in like earlier versions of D&D when you have like a monster that can only be damaged by magic weapons and it's like, oh, this just, this does kind of change the way that the fight occurs, but it doesn't seem nearly as interesting to me as something like this where it's like, oh, this is, you know, we need to go on a quest where right? we have a like specific knowledge that we've got a quest to figure out how to beat this thing. You could hypothetically add the undefeatable condition to any monster from any 5e book. You could have like a, a one of your favorite D&D &D 5e monsters just be the monster for um, the session and give it the undefeatable condition and it'll be big and mean until you remove that condition and then it'll be defeatable. And now that you're seeing these sort of different versions of things that are compatible with 5th edition, you can see these ideas and going, you know what, I could take this straight out of Beowulf and drop it in my, my vanilla or core 5e, you know, what C5e. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's perfect. And you know, you know why I like it? Because it takes some of those intelligence-based skills and gives them some more teeth. Because yeah. like you say, looking into the the lore of the monster, that all becomes a bit more flavoursome and worth doing. It's backed up with some some rules that Yeah, and the book really encourages that. To, they basically say like you want to in in the Hermit Sanctuary Adventure, they've got a couple of places where there's sort of multiple options and what they suggest is like, okay, if you're playing like a big brute hero who just smashes things go this way. But if you're playing like a really smart, clever hero, maybe suggest, have one of the NPCs suggest this thing because it'll mm -hmm. be kind of a, a different way to approach the monster. One of the things that gets um, discussed with 5e a lot, at least online, is this idea that, well, 5e is basically just a combat game. And I think Beowulf shows that, you know, it certainly can be just a combat game, but mm -hmm. you can also do really cool stuff if you're willing to do some prep and, and engage those other elements of the game. So class features, every hero in Beowulf is the hero class, um, which is one class that has a cool mix of different things available to them. Uh, some of the stuff comes from like the fighter and some of it comes, some of it is kind of completely new. And then you also get a um, subclass. There are six subclasses, each related to the different um, ability scores. And they give you cool kind of special abilities for um, your character based on which subclass you choose. 
First off, as a hero, you get 10 plus your constitution score hit points at first level. So you're going to start with 21 hit points. Nice to see your actual stat being used on the sheet. Yeah, nice to see your actual stat. And there are a couple other places where it's used too. And then obviously you get one hit die um, as a first level character. You get... Um, no tool proficiencies, but you get proficiency with all armor, all shields, and all weapons. And then saving throws. You're going to choose one from dex, constitution, or wisdom, and another from strength, intelligence, or charisma. So two saving throws, but you get to pick with some restrictions. I'm going to say with such a high dexterity, it seems like that would, I would be proficient in that. Definitely not strength. That doesn't seem like a good fit. Mm -hmm. I think maybe may may charisma. Yeah, sounds good. All right, and then you get three more skills to be proficient in. I think I think crafty tends to tell a few porky pies. <laughs> maybe maybe investigation. You know, um, curious. Yeah. I'm quite curious. Sounds good. I'm gonna go I'm gonna keep on this this charisma vibe and go and go for the persuasion, I think. So investigation, persuasion, and one more. Oh, and deception. You already got that. And deception. Yeah. Nice. So that is your three more skills. All right, you get some equipment. You get a spear, and one of the uh, um, conceits of the game is that you always have access to a spear. So if you lose your spear, one of your followers will just hand you another spear. And then what else do we get? You get a knee-length male hauberk with a shield or a male corslet and either a cone boss shield or a metal rimmed shield. Um, one of the things that Beowulf does is they've got a lot of variety within a sort of more limited range. So I would suggest the... Um, male corslet instead of the the heavy armor yeah that seems more appropriate and you can have um a metal rimmed shield or a cone boss shield both of them provide plus two ac but the metal rimmed shield um has a special ability that it resists damage and the cone boss shield allows you to punch people with your shield I think I think I'll go for the more defensive option now. I don't think I don't picture myself punching people with my shield too much. Yeah, I kind of figured. Um, and then you get a martial weapon and an iron ribbed helm, or two martial weapons. I think an iron ribbed helm might mm. be something that I've blagged off of somebody, and it's kind of like a something that I'm that I'm proud about having this helm. Male corslet is 13 plus dex mod max 2. So that is, we're going to just call it a 12 and add your full dex. Um, and then metal rimmed shield. So you get your uh, 15 AC from your male corslet and your dex. You get a plus 2 for your shield and a plus 1 for your helmet. So you're at 18 AC right now. Hmm. Not too shabby. Not too shabby at all for, for a first-level hero. Um, mm. 18 AC and 21 hit points. That's pretty nasty. Melee weapons. Um, I think I'll go with the... I think I'll go with the long shacks. And... All right. And then we need a choice of a hunting bow, an angon, which is like a, a special javelin, or mm -hmm. a sling. I think a hunt. I think a hunting bow. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We have got your stuff, and then you also get a. Uh, they call it a hero's kit, which is basically just a, a regular adventuring kit. Some rations, some rope. We don't really worry about rations in this game or ammo or anything like that because that's not very mm -hmm. heroic. So, as a first level hero you get two features. The first one is based on being a hero, which is weird, W-Y-R-D, which means fate. And mm -hmm. this gives you the alignment die bonus. So basically, when you roll with advantage, you can choose one of your dice to be your alignment die. And if you use that die, you get inspiration. 
So you can hypothetically even spend inspiration to get advantage, roll with advantage, and if you pick up, if you choose to use the first die, you get inspiration again. So you can you can kind of keep the inspiration flowing really well as a hero. Or if you narratively can create a situation where you'd have advantage, you can get inspiration through that. The other thing is you need to choose your heroic tale because you get the level one feature from your heroic tale. So this is another kind of change to the core class is that the subclasses give you something right away. There's Swift Blessed, which is dexterity, or um, Riddle Reaver, which is intelligence, and either of those would probably be good for your character. You can choose whatever you want, and they all have really cool stuff. But Well, I'm going to randomize it. So one, one to three, Swift Blessed. Yep, that's what it is. Nice. It's a, a two. So Swift Blessed gives you Trickster. You may perform uh, sleight of hand uh, with small items that can be hidden in pockets or sleeves. Onlookers might believe something a supernatural has occurred, possibly granting you advantage or disadvantage on your next charisma check. You gain proficiency in the sleight of hand skill if you do not already have it. Oh, well, that's perfect, isn't it? Ah, oh, what a cool little character. Shaping up good. Yeah, it's a really cool. And it's great that we did so much kind of randomly for, uh, for him. We need a name. There's a random name generator if you'd like to use that, or you can come up with your own name. Uh, let's use the random name generator. All right. Roll 1d20 for the first letter. An 18. An 18 gives you first letter is a T, and now roll another d20. An 8. An 8. Tidhild. Tidhild. The other, the ones next to it are Thymel and Tilbert. Tilbert, I think. Tilbert, yeah. Tilbert, the adventurer. The hero. <laughs> the very young hero. Mm. And then you get a feat for being a hero, because you get a free feat at first level. One of the really cool things is a lot of the feats have requirements, I think makes means that the feats are really flavorful. You've got a little bit of a limited palette as well. I think yeah, it helps. It, it helps to not have like you know literally everything available. You can and for replayability, right? That you can uh, make a new hero with different stats and different uh, skills and a different background and a different alignment and have different kind of ways to push that character as they develop. Ooh, miraculous avoidance! Your alignment must be of the book. Increase your dexterity score by one. When an attacker hits you with an attack, you can use your reaction to negate all damage from that attack. You must take a long rest before using this feature again. That'd be that sounds one. perfect. So that's like a divine intervention or something yeah, like that. Perhaps. Yeah. And then the way I do rests in this is that long rests are just like 5e. They're a night. Um, mm -hmm. And you get all the regular stuff from from the long rest. Short rests are like 15 minutes. They're just basically sit down, catch your breath, and yep. uh, feel better. Because I feel like that's more heroic than having to take an, an hour. hour. Um, all right. I think that is everything. And there you go. Problem solved. Thanks to Arlen Walker, we now know how to generate a character in Beowulf, Age of Heroes, for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. Thanks for joining us and watching this video. Take care and I'll catch you later.